for this fifth one, we have that a polygraph test is used to determine whether people are telling the truth or not. Okay, truth or not. But it is not completely accurate. When a person tells the truth, they have a 20% chance of failing the test. Okay, so even if you're saying the truth, there's a 20% chance that the test says you fail. Okay, because the test is not accurate. Each test outcome is independent of any previous outcome. Cool. They tell us that 10 people take a polygraph test and all 10 tell the truth. So there are no liars here in the 10 guys that took the test, but there is still a chance that the test says that they're lying. See, even if they're all saying the truth, the test can be wrong. It's a calculation error. That's the context. So for part A, we need to calculate the expected number of people who will pass this polygraph test. All right, so for expected number or expected values, the intuition is the following. See, you're going to be taking your probability of the event and multiplying by the number of trials. And so may, let's start with something a little more simple. Okay, let's say we are in a situation of a coin. See, now a coin has two possibilities. It has heads or tails. See, and what's the probability of getting heads? One half. What's the probability, probability of getting tails? One half. And so I go ahead and ask you, what is the expected value, right? Or better said, expected number. See, expected number of heads in whatever, man, 60 toin causes. Toin, toin, <laughs> coin tosses, my bad. This is a math class, not a language class. So expect the number of heads in 60 coin tosses. See, I'm going to be taking the probability, right, of the event, which is one half. And then the number of trials in this case is 60. See, so one half times 60, 60 divided by 2, that gives me 30. Okay, so the expected value or expected number of heads depends on your number, number of trials. Okay, one thing is, is me asking what is expected probability of getting heads. And another thing is that I ask you what is the expected number of times I get heads in 60 coin tosses. See? And so here, the intuition is no different. See? What is the probability of my event? And what are the number of trials that I'm dealing with? So for part A, it is being it is asking specifically the number of people who will pass this polygraph test. And so what is the probability that you pass? Well, I'm going to go ahead and say right away that it's 0 0.8 for passing. See? Now a lot of you are thinking, where did you get the number from? All right, so what is the probability of failing? Probability of failing is 20%. That means that the probability of passing is 80 see and that is something very intuitive in probability that we all need to understand right now okay let's say that i am throwing a dice okay i'm going to take a moment to explain this because it's super important okay i'm throwing a dice see it has one side here maybe three numbers here maybe four over here i don't really know how dice are set up okay but it's a dice see a six-sided dice and i tell you that this six-sided dice is unfair see it is not you know, it's it's just not fair. It's loaded on one side, stuff like that. See, so that means the probability of getting one, two, three, four, five, and six are all like tricky. See, they're like not fair. So the probability of rolling a one on this dice is one over ten. The probability of rolling a two on this dice is also one over ten. The probability of rolling a three, let's say, is whatever, three over ten. The probability of rolling a 4, we can say is 2 over 10. The probability of rolling a 5, I do not know. And the probability of rolling a 6 is 1 over 10. See? And so here, you can actually tell me what this number is. Just by context. See? Just by context, you can tell me that this number is 1 minus all the other probabilities. So it's 1 minus 1 over 10, plus 1 over 10, plus 3 over 10, plus 2 over 10, plus 1 over 10, which is... 8 over 10, see? So that's actually going to give you 2 over 10, which is 20%, see? So that is the probability of rolling a 5 on this dice. See, how did you figure that out? Because you're doing 1 minus everything else, see? Why is it 1? 
you're doing one minus everything else because one in probability is a hundred percent. Okay. And your probabilities, and this is the key idea I'm trying to share, your probabilities always have to add up to a hundred percent. Okay. There can't be anything in between. And so if they tell you that there's a 20% chance of failing the test, you go ahead and do one minus that 20%. And that gives you the probability of passing the test, which is 80%. See? If this here is confusing, remember that 1 is 100%. So this is the same as 100% minus 20% equals 80%. And how do you turn a percent into a decimal? Well, 80% is the same as 0 0.8. See? You're like dividing by 100, something like that. See? As long as you remember that 1 is 100% and 0 0.5 is 50%, you can probably figure out the rest. See? What is 0 0.05? That's going to be 5%. See? All right, so that was just a mini class and percents and stuff like that and why we are doing 1 minus that. See? I know it's... I know some of you probably know that already, but I think it's super important to have it clear for those of you that don't. That is why you do 1 minus that. See? We call it like the complementary probability, something like that. I don't remember the fancy math language, dude. You don't have to either. The main idea is you do 1 minus that because 1 is going to be your total and you're finding the other probabilities, or the, the rest of it, which in this case is passing. Passing is 80% chance. There it is. Times the number of trials. Well, expect the number of people. Cierto? Number of trials. How many people took the test? How many people took the test? 10 people take a polygraph test. 0.8 times 10 is going to give you 8. So the expected number of people who will pass this polygraph test is 8. That is part A. For part B, we need to calculate the probability that exactly four people will fail this polygraph test. I already highlighted the buzzwords. See? It says the probability that exactly four people will fail this polygraph test. So first things first. See? What is the probability of failing? The probability of failing, okay, probability fail is 20%. I'm going to go ahead and leave that leave that there for now. And we need to find the probability that exactly four people pass. See? Now, there's a couple of ways to do this, right? Um, you can do a tree diagram. You can work with the binomial function, stuff like that. Now, because we have a graphing calculator, I suggest we work with the binomial function. See? Now, why the binomial function? What the heck is the binomial function? The binomial function, following its name, see, you have binomial, see? You have the, a binomial distribution. And not to get like too into it, because I know it can get a little confusing, but the intuition, which is what I think is the most important part, is that the binomial distribution depends on bi. See? Bi, same as bisexual, is two. Okay, you have two options. You need to think about the, dis the binomial distribution when you're dealing with scenarios with only two options. Okay, so for example, the coin toss is only two options. Passing or failing is also only two options, see? And this can extend to so many other things as well. I mean, it can, it can extend to, like, uh, did Jimmy go to the beach or not? You know, well, like, what's the probability that Billy goes to the beach on a weekend and there's, like, ten weekends, cierto? Whatever, man. Like, as long as, as there's only two options, you got to think of the binomial distribution, see? And so once you get familiar with that and also with your formula booklet and your calculator, you will know that your graphing calculator, when you go to distribution, cierto? pressing second bars, when you go to distribution, if you scroll down a lot, you find binomial PDF and binomial CDF. Now, this is the sort of thing you just kind of have to practice, get familiar with and stuff like that. See, But whenever you encounter a binomial distribution, first by identifying that you have only two options, cierto? Uh, heads or tails, blah, 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 yes or no. These are your two main tools. Okay, you have PDF and CDF. And I'm just going to say right away, and this is the kind of thing you should write down. Binomial PDF is for exact... Uh, I don't really know how to put it. I'm going to put it like this. Okay, exact probability. Well, binomial CDF is going to be from here to here probability. Look, I know this is not the most fancy math definition you're going to find, but I do think it's the most intuitive one. 
okay? So for part B, it is asking us to calculate the probability that exactly four people will fail this polygraph test. So I identified it's a binomial distribution. I know which tools I have because I've studied a lot. I have PDF or CDF. And I know the intuition, so that PDF is for exact probability. So the first one on my list. So I'm going to go ahead and press PDF and see what it asks for. So it asks for trials, a p-value, and the next value. Paste is the same as enter. So trials, well, how many people do we have? We have 10 people ¿cierto? taking the polygraph test. So this is going to be trials. Cool. Trials is going to be 10. P-value. P-value is just probability. ¿cierto? And since we're talking about failing this polygraph test, well, this is probability of failing. So this is going to be my probability in this case. Bada bim, bada boom. What is 20% in decimal? 0 0.2. And my x value, and this is where a lot of people are like, what the hell is my x value? Your x value is when it says exactly four people, four people will be your, oops, your x value, see? So your, four, your x value is the exact amount of people that they're asking for. So I'm going to put four here, go ahead and press paste, boom, it gives me that number, see? I know it looks a little weird, but let's write it down. So for part B, our answer was 0 0.0. .0. 880. Now, what is this in percent? Well, you go ahead and multiply it by 100, okay? Multiply it by 100, gives you 8.80%. So the probability that exactly, not more, not less, exactly for people fail this polygraph test is just around 8.8%. All right, so that is for part B. For part C, we need to determine the probability that fewer than seven people, okay, will pass this polygraph test. So now, because I got to know my calculator, I know that I'm working with binomial CDF, see? So, let's see what binomial CDF even asks for. So I go over here, I press binomial CDF, and it asks for the same stuff, trials, P, and X value, okay? The thing is, CDF is from here to here probability, see? And so for the TI-84, the binomial distribution looks something like this, okay? And so basically, the binomial CDF for the TI-84 thinks from left to right. So that means if I put 10 trials here, and then I put the probability and my x value, ¿cierto? It's gonna go. It's gonna find the area under the curve until you reach that x value. So if my x value, I say it's gonna be six, it's gonna find the probability under the curve until I reach reach six. See, and it thinks from left to right, which can be relevant in a moment. So, um, what is the probability? What is the trials I need? Blah blah blah. Let's find out. So in this case, okay. We have that we need fewer than seven people, okay? And we're also talking about passing. So the passing is gonna be my probability, see? What is the probability of passing? We said earlier it's 0.8. So my probability is gonna be 0 0.8, your p-value. And fewer than seven people is going to be your x-value, see? Your trials has not changed. This is still going to be your trials. So I go ahead, plug in 10 here. P, my probability for passing, you know, this changed a little bit for passing is 0.8. My X value is going to be fewer than seven people. Now I know that part is a little bit confusing. So I'm going to go ahead and do like a quick diagram, see? So I have my first person, my second, my third, my fourth, my fifth, my sixth, my seventh, my eighth, my ninth, my 10th. So if I say, if I say fewer than seven people, let's go ahead and take a moment and absorb what that really makes reference to, see? So if I have fewer than seven people, that means I can't have seven or more, ¿cierto? So that means that from here to there, I have a bunch of guys that pass the test, 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 pass the test. And my guys, 7, 8, 9, or 10 are all failing, okay? So fewer than 7 people 
means that six guys, as I just showed here, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, six guys pass. All right, so that is my x value. All right, fewer than seven people is my x value. It's going to be six. Only the guys that pass. Boom, boom, go ahead and paste. It gives me 0 0.12. See, so for part C, I end up with 0 0.12. Uh, whoops, sorry about that. Which is just around 12.08%. 12.08%. So that is for part C. Oh, and if any of you are thinking, how the heck do I show my work here? Because I know that the IB cares a lot about showing your process, showing your work, and all that stuff. Well, notice how the calculator puts it. Cierto? Up here, it literally says binomial CDF. And this is how you would put your answer. Yes, you would put your answer as binomial CDF. So there you're telling the, the guy grading you, yo, I'm using this function here with the parameters 10. So that means trials 10, 0 0.8. That means probability 0 0.8 and X value of six. And just with that, they're going to understand what you were referring to. See? The whole thing of, of binomial CDF reading from left to right in this case wasn't so relevant. If you wanted to solve it with those that fail, you might have to do one minus your result. See, I don't want to get into that because it's a little more confusing, but the intuition still remains. Okay, binomial CDF reads it from left to right. In other exercises, it can be more relevant. In this case, it wasn't. But anyways, that is how you solve number five.